In this long journey, what hurdles have you faced? So the hurdles that normally, as a woman, there were situations where people didn't like me. And what were the pivotal moments that shaped your career? Um, uh, so one is uh, the thing that I told you about, where I had to make a decision to quit my job. And what's the most beautiful memory in SNS? Is it okay to ask? And what's your opinion on futuristic software development? What uh, might be the changes? Uh, AI is going to influence a lot. And what's SNS in one word? Uh, it's 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 a, a, a fond memory. Good morning, everyone. I am very happy to introduce our own alumni, Miss Harita, who is a graduate of IT department from 2008 to 2012. So over to you, Harita. Hello, everyone. Really nice to be here. I'm uh, I'm coming here after 12 years. So much has changed, but also nothing has changed which is very nice nice to see sunil sir here um and also nice to see all the uh, aspiring young soon to be graduates hello everyone welcome to alumni talks presented by student alumni relations excel it's my immense pleasure to introduce miss harita who is currently working as senior director analyst at gartner firstly thank you ma'am thank you for coming to our college after long back and what's your feel coming back to college after such a long day <laughs> it's uh, i have uh, i've had great memories here and it's always such a fun feeling for me to come back to look at the same watchman that we had 12 years ago it's, it's so nice it's really nice to be here yeah ma'am can you walk us through your career path graduating from snht to pursuing a career as senior director and analyst at gartner yeah so I was uh, campus placed uh, from Srinidhi. I got hired in, uh, oh, sorry, I was placed in Cognizant, Vipro and Infosys at that time. But I chose uh, Cognizant because all of my friends were going there. So I, I picked Cognizant. And um, so I, I had to move to Bangalore and Pune for my traineeship in Cognizant. And, um, and then like uh, I worked in Cognizant in India for, for one year. And um, I had a project because one of my cousins were li was living in the Netherlands. At that time, everybody wanted to go to uh, America and uh, I didn't want to go to the US. And I had very specific location that I wanted to go to, uh, which was the Netherlands. And so I asked Incognizant if there was a project for me in the Netherlands. And there was. So I was super lucky and um, I got placed in Nike via Cognizant. Uh, the Nike, the shoe brand. Uh, and yeah, so that was my journey to move abroad. And I've been in the Netherlands ever since. Um, so after going to uh, Nike, I worked there for six more months. And I had a situation where I had to pick between coming back to India forever or, uh, or uh, quitting my job because of the visa situation. So I, I took a risk and I quit my job. And I had two months to find another job in the Netherlands, and, and I did. So I, I then got hired for a bank in the Netherlands. So I had a local contract. I was in a Dutch system, and um, that really also helped me to get into the uh, Dutch system and like a local, but not like an international uh, from via cognizant. I mean, so. Um, and I had worked in multiple companies after that because I, I did short term projects. So every six months I would change until I started working for this German company called Seeberger, where I was a consultant and I had to travel a lot within Europe. Um, and that was really great. Uh, I got to work in a lot of technologies, um, new technologies. I had to learn some things on the job. Um, and then I also grew into leadership positions when I was in that company. And um, and then at some point the travel was too much, so I had decided to quit and join the bank back again, where I was heading a department of uh, backend engineers that were building mobile apps for the bank. So the app that we had uh, was built by my teams. Um, I worked there for three more years, and and then I got a better opportunity at a Dutch company. Uh, to become an acting CTO because one of the CTOs was becoming a CEO and they wanted a transitioning uh, uh, position. And I went there and I liked it, but uh, I felt it was very management and uh, very operational and I wanted something 
very close to technology, very close to what I like, which is um, AI and software engineering, because over the years I've, I've worked close with technology all the time. So then I found Gartner and I also like working from home all the time. So I was trying to pick something that where I have flexibility to work from anywhere, basically, but also stay close to technology, but still uh, be in uh, leadership positions. So uh, yeah, now I'm at Gartner. I've been uh, here for one and a half years and I um, currently my job is basically helping all the C-level executives from all over the world uh, with all their AI and technology related problems. So, for example, one day I would get a call from a CTO from a big company saying, hey, tell me, what is this craziness about generative AI? How do I uh, start it? How do I learn about it? So then I help them with uh, from strategic, taking strategic decisions on, on those technology-related problems. So I help on the technology part and the strategy part. So, yeah, now I'm on vacation in Hyderabad and I'm here. <laughs> Truly an inspiring journey, ma'am. Thank you. In this long journey, what hurdles have you faced and what have been a good kind of experience to you? Um, so the hurdles that normally as a woman you can face, you can be alone at some times because you're working mostly in a man's uh, world, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. There's so many men. Um, the men, man versus woman ratio is really like 80 to 20 percent. And uh, being a young woman, it was great. Uh, I loved it. But uh, you need to be really strong and be able to stand by your values and stand by your decisions. So if someone tells you something, you are in a position to uh, back yourself up because you stand for something. So uh, there were situations where people didn't like me, people um, thought I was too confronting. Um, so I would just quit the job and find another job. Um, so what I suggest is wherever you go, whatever job you take, make sure your hiring manager, so whoever is hiring you, your, whoever your manager is going to be, should be great and great for you. So you, you and your manager should have a great rapport. Um, so we collect a lot of data. So the data says more than 88% of uh, people leave their jobs because they had a spat with their manager or they didn't like the manager. It is really true. And it happened with me and um, every time that happens make sure that you stand up for yourself and take the right decision don't just stay because you're stuck you're never stuck it, your life is in your hands so be bold and uh, take the right steps you are really proved what women can actually do in these 12 years <laughs> Thank it's you. really great ma'am one break no? yeah ma'am what were the pivotal moments that shaped your career uh, so one is uh, the thing that I told you about where I had to make a decision to quit my job uh, uh, to stay back in the Netherlands. So that was very uh, one of the biggest decisions that I've taken in my life. Uh, and another is the situation that I told you earlier again about, uh, you know, I had to make a decision to quit the job again because yes. of someone uh, in my uh, company. And that also allowed me to explore other opportunities that are outside of my comfort zone. And um, and the last job before Gartner was where I was, you know, I always aspired to become a CEO or a CTO. And the last job uh, where I was the acting CTO, I realized I don't want to be that because, you know, as a, I mean, if you aspire to be, I'm not discouraging you, but mm -hmm. it's not for me. And uh, because I like, I like actual work. I don't like just to be in meetings and not do anything, not use my brain. I like using my brain. And I really made it, everybody was shocked when I quit the job um, because it was, it was a good position. Uh, it was a dream for a lot of people, but I had to make a hard quit because I was looking out for myself. And now I'm in like really, I'm in a place where I always aspire to be. Uh, super comfortable, super uh, happy and also, like my family is in uh, Hyderabad, so my husband and I visit uh, whenever I can because I can work from anywhere. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I really wish for all of you to follow your dreams, pick your, know your passions, pick your passions and work towards your passions. Yeah. Ma'am, what advice would you like to give the current students of SNHT who are aspiring to pursue a career in your field? Yeah. So uh, first of all, ask yourself if you like programming. Because if you're an engineer, if you're a 
software engineer, you're going to do a lot of programming, which is great if you like it. But if you don't like it, there are also other elements within software engineering that you can contribute to. For example, you can become an IT analyst where you're, you don't have to program, but you're understanding what the business wants and you're converting that into technical requirements. I'll give you an example. Let's say, um, let's say you, have a, you have an app, you have a shopping app, right? Mintra, let's say you're, you're, you're Mintra, right? Uh, you need to, uh, you think that your customers are not enjoying the app, but how would you find, find out about that? You can only find out about that by, you know, by, by getting data, right? But that, for that, you need to build a feature. So you can be that person that's translating what the business wants, which is building analytics in the app, to the IT team so that they are building that for you. So you don't have to program. You can be the analyst who is, who is uh, in between the business and, uh, and software engineers. So there's so many, similarly, there's so many roles within uh, software development that you can be a part of. So what's important for you to know is what is it that you really like? Do you like to program? Do you like to be a manager at some point? Or do you just like speaking, right? Uh, which is great for people who want to be the liaison between the business and IT. So pick your battle uh, and pick the right battle because you need to be fighting that battle and you need to enjoy fighting that battle. Yeah. And I got that point that it's not about the role we are forced to do. It's about the thing we are like to do. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. most important. Yeah. Yeah. Ma'am, what's your opinion on futuristic software development? What uh, might be the changes? Yeah, so how we learned in Srinidhi, uh, and I'm sure it's changed uh, right now. We used to learn a lot of theory and very little practicals, right? But uh, what I suggest is to do hands-on if you are passionate about it. That is, of course, if you like programming, you have to practice hands-on uh, uh, exper experimentation, have like hobby projects. Uh, AI is going to influence a lot. Um, AI is everywhere. We also see a lot of big companies um, incorporating AI into any part of their software development. Um, I don't know what IDEs you use. I don't know if you use Eclipse or uh, JetBrains. Everything has AI in it and AI will be the future. So in the future, what it's going to be is um, you need to know the basics, right? You need to know, for example, like English language, right? You, if you don't know English language, you can't enter anything in ChatGPT to get what you want, right? You need to speak something. So similarly, Java, you need to know what Java is. You need to know how good programming works, what good programming is. And then you're able to play with AI because then you're able to take help from AI to make your life easier. So AI will be everywhere and that will be uh, uh, really AI augmented software engineering is the future. Cool. Uh, can you ask this question, ma'am? What's the most beautiful memory in SNST? Is it okay to ask? Yeah, they have, I have a, a, a lot of memories. What is... I, mean, uh, I didn't ask. Oh, like, uh, uh, okay, I have, I have a couple. One is um, the, the bad ones, which is the most fun ones, is uh, my dad and my granddad was called to the university <laughs> because my, one of the lecturers that I worked with hated me. And uh, he told my grandpa and my dad that he's going to give me a zero in, in the lab if I get the lab. But I didn't get it in the end uh, because I could pick which lab I was getting. So that was really fun. And I troubled uh, Sunil sir a lot, a lot, like you will not imagine. But also because I would get good marks, sir would punish me, but also would not understand how to punish me because I should be in the class. So I will I learn it, but I'm like causing trouble in the class. I'm always sitting at the back and like, you know, doing some issue. I loved it. It was great. And, um, and maybe, I don't know, I should, I, just, I probably should tell this, but uh, we had a lot of bunk routes uh, behind uh, one building and behind uh, ECM block. Uh, but I don't know. I think by the time we were graduating, it was already closed off with, with barbed wires and stuff. That was fun. And, um, and basketball. I used to play a lot of basketball. I was uh, uh, we were a really good team. We won a lot of medals for Trinity, and we would like uh, go to different universities and like play basketball in the hot sun. It was crazy. Uh, back in the day, we didn't care about anything, and really we could balance uh, sports and uh, <clears throat> studies and fun as well together. So uh, yeah, yeah, those were my fun memories.
Cool, ma'am. Ma'am, in, in this conversation, you have disclosed many bang roots as well. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back. What advice would you like to give to yourself as a student at SNST, having the knowledge of now? Um, what I would say is uh, that life is going to be okay, no matter what happens, because you make good for yourself when you have clarity on what you want to do. which i had uh, back in the day but the whole world i felt at some point felt it was against me but i made it right and i know you will make it too so you just need to be kind to yourself have trust on yourself be bold be brave be fearless and um nobody can do anything to you so your life will should be and need to be in your hands really motivated ma'am and ma'am what advice would you like to give to the viewers um have fun okay uh these are the best years of your life when i say best what i mean by that is you have a lot of time you have less responsibilities um you have great friends great support system around you so have fun um and also slowly think about what you want to become who you want to be and that might change you know what i mean by that is maybe when you're 25 when you're working in an it job maybe you don't want to do that maybe you want to quit everything and start something new and that's okay right things can change but have clarity on what you want to do so you because you don't have to convince anyone except yourself right so be true to yourself and have fun have fun is the most important thing so don't take pressure of anything it's the world is very nice people are really kind out there so yes. just just enjoy life Ma'am, um, what kind of transformation would you like to generally see in terms of education, in terms of societal aspects nowadays? I think uh, practical application of uh, things. Uh, back in the day when we were studying, we had a lot of theory, and that's okay. Um, th- that's the only way of education I know. So for me, it's okay. But I feel as an adult, when I'm in like practical world, when you have to apply things, uh, I wish I had learned about this in the university. Um, so I would say. uh make sure make sure whatever you're learning you're applying right and that's when you will learn that's the real job the real job is not theory or textbooks the real job is pl- practical implementation so i i would focus on that and what is snst in one word uh it's 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 a, a a fond memory for me thank you so much for your valuable time i'm looking thank forward you. for many such collaborations and thank you so much yeah thank you happy to be here yes